Welcome inside the Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York. I'm Moro Ranallo. He is Pauli Malinaji. Soon we'll be joined by Steve Farhood. It is the official weigh-in for the triple header coming your way Saturday night on Showtime Championship Boxing Live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Adrian Broner, the former four-division champion, tries to avoid the first two-fight losing streak of his career against former two-division champion Jesse Vargas at a contract weight of 144 pounds. It'll be Jamal Charlo, Hugo Centeno looking to make major money moves at middleweight when they face off and Gervonta Davis who lost his 130 pound title on the scales in his last fight well he looks to pick up another piece of that 130 pound crown against former featherweight champion Jesus Cuellar but right now we are set for the official weigh-in and without further ado let's toss it to the dulcet tones of Hall of Fame ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Test, test. All right, you guys are clear on video your audio is still hot. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you, and we welcome you to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the official weigh-in for our big night of action coming your way, taking place tomorrow night right here at Barclays Center in uh, Brooklyn. It's all brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, along with the Bella Entertainment TGB Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble tequila the noble pursuit well ladies and gentlemen our opening attraction on showtime championship boxing is 12 rounds of action for the wba featherweight championship of the world please welcome the fighters as they make their way to the stage at this time First from Buenos Aires, Argentina. He is ranked the WBA number one super featherweight. Please welcome the former WBA featherweight champion of the world, Jesus Cuellar. And now we invite to the stage at this time his opponent from Baltimore, Maryland. He's ranked the WBA number three super featherweight contender, the former IBF junior lightweight champion of the world, the hard-hitting and undefeated Gervonta Tank Davis. And as our fighters are preparing to step onto the scale, we bring to your attention once again, this is for the WBA Super Featherweight World Title. 130 pounds is the weight limit. We will invite our guest from Argentina to the scale first. He is the WBA top contender. He is the former world champion. Please welcome to the scale at this time, Jesus Cuellar. Cuellar moving up to 130 pounds for the first time in nearly a decade. Coming off a split decision loss to Abner Mares where... Quajar lost his 126-pound title. Needs to make the 130-pound limit. 129 and a quarter pounds for Jesus Quajar. 129 and a quarter. And now his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, young boxing phenom from Baltimore, former world champion, 19-0 with 18 knockouts, Gervonta Tank Davis. 129 pounds even for Gervonta Davis, 129 pounds. So Davis, after losing his title on the scales against Francisco Fonseca on the Mayweather-McGregor undercard by two pounds, comes in under for this opportunity of picking up another piece of that 130-pound title. And, uh, and that's something to keep in mind, his level of concentration, his level of focus. Uh, you New know, trainer with Kevin Cunningham in Florida along with Adrian Broner. This is what you want to see out of a fighter who's this talented. You, know, you also want to see the dedication so that, you know, Everything can come together and the pieces can, the full puzzle can come together and you can get to see him maximize all the talent that he has. Davis wants to be the next pay-per-view star, has all the tools, but has had outside of the ring problems just like Adrian Broner. And that's why they, they wanted more structure. They wanted more discipline, more focus. And he got away from the distractions of his hometown of Baltimore. And both he and Quasar are coming in under the 130-pound limit, so they will be Facing off now, and they will be facing off in the ring Saturday night for a piece of that super featherweight title. Both of them are southpaws. And there they are, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it opens up our Showtime Championship Boxing Program, WBA Super Featherweight World Championship 
Gervonta Tank Davis undefeated young former champion against the very crafty veteran Jesus Cuellar from Argentina. Davis versus Quajar kicks off the triple header Saturday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific, on Showtime Championship Boxing from the new mecca of the sweet science here in the east, the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Davis coming off an eight-month layoff, the longest of his professional career. Jesus Cuellar, you're coming off a layoff, and you're fighting in a new weight class. Uh, why is he so confident that he can beat Javante Davis? Manny Robles, his trainer, will translate. Thank you. Uh, Jesus Cuellar, vienes de un descanso, vienes de un tiempo sin pelear. Ahora subes a las 130 libras. ¿Por qué te sientes tú tan seguro de ganar esta pelea? Me siento muy bien. Eh, porque vine a hacer un, un buen campamento ya hace meses y nada, porque voy a ser, porque quiero ser de vuelta, de vuelta campeón del mundo. I feel very well, I had a great camp uh, and nothing, I mean, I feel very uh, sure of myself and I will become a world champion. Gervonta Davis is all about quickness and speed. What does Jesus have to do to counter that and to win this fight? Uh, es, tu rival es un peleador rápido. ¿Tú qué vas a hacer para contrarrestar ese, esas características de, su pele de, de tu rival? He trabajado muy bien en el gimnasio y he, he potenciado mi, mi boxeo y mi velocidad, así que vamos a explotarlo ese día. I had a great camp and we've done everything necessary to uh, uh, face his speed, face his power, and uh, we'll show that on come Saturday night. We wish you luck. Good luck. <laughs> Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. We'll bring in uh, Gervonta. Quajar working with his 10th trainer in Manny Robles. Quajar sitting under a veritable forest of learning Javante trees. Javante Davis, last time we saw you at a weigh-in, it wasn't the same feeling here. You were 132. You had to give up your title tonight, 129. Is that the sweetest sound you ever heard when, he's, when you heard 129? Um, amazing. You know, I had a great camp. Um, when I focus, you know, our focus tank is a dangerous tank, so I'm ready. When we had our fighter meeting earlier today with the Showtime announcers, you kept using that word, focus. You have a new trainer, Kevin Cunningham. What has allowed you to regain your focus? And how will that affect your performance in the ring? Moving my camp from, from Baltimore to uh, Florida. You know, um, I ain't had no distractions. You know, uh, just waking up, boxing, and, and going to sleep, boxing, you know. And, and I knew what I was coming to do when I woke up, I woke up in the morning and I'm, I'm ready. So you only have one more day to wait, so good luck to you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Gervonta. Over the last 30 years, more than 30 champs have lost their titles on the scales of those 30. Only three and now, ladies subsequently and gentlemen, we regained continue a title with our in the same division. Williams. This time we That's present what Davis our is trying to do. attraction on Showtime Championship Boxing, the official weigh-in for the interim WBC middleweight world title. Please welcome at this time to the stage from Oxnard, California. His record is 26 ones, one loss, one no decision with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Ranked number four middleweight in the world by the WBC. Please welcome Hugo the Boss Centeno Jr. The first scheduled 12 rounder for Hugo Centeno Jr. And now Jr. we invite to the stage his opponent from Houston, Texas. The undefeated WBC number one middleweight contender and the former IBF junior middleweight world champion, Jermall Taylor. Jermall Charlo, excuse me. Check that. Jermall, the future of boxing, Charlo. Well, was supposed to take and place now first March to the 3rd. scale, ladies and gentlemen, for this interim title, we're weighing in at 160 pound weight limit. First, with a record of 26 wins in his 28 professional bouts, the WBC number four ranked contender, Hugo the Boss Centeno Jr. A Centeno Jr. rib injury delayed the fight, but he says he's 100% ready. 158 and a half pounds for Hugo Centeno Jr., 158 
and a half pounds. Well under the 160 pounds. And now, pound ladies and limit. gentlemen, his opponent, not to be confused with another great former champion. He's WBC's top middleweight contender. One of boxing sensational fighting twins, known as the future of boxing, the undefeated Jermall Charlo. Former champion of 154. He weighs in right at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds. 160 pounds for Jermall Charlo. Well, we'll have our fighters suit up. We'll have a photo opportunity. Then we'll hear from Steve Harhood with a couple of interview questions for both of these fighters. Once again, for the interim WBC Middleweight World Championship. In Charlo's debut at 160, became the first person to stop Jorge Haaland via fourth round TKO. Haaland in that fight was perceived to be injured. He injured himself in the first round. <laughs> or maybe he came in injured. You never know, right? You never know. Centeno ready for the face-off. Man who's... Fought with a lot of pride over the years, working with uh, the body snatcher, Mike McCollum, the former three-division champion. This is the second fight under the McCollum learning tree. Or make that, sorry, that's bodies. Jesse Vargas. See, I had to do with Jimmy Lennon Jr. there. I made <laughs> Jimmy feel a little bit better. Yeah, Hugo Santana works <laughs> yes, with uh, Eric Brown. That's right, who you know very well. Yes. yes. So what, what, does, what does Eric Brown bring to a fighter like Santana Jr.? Oh, you know, tactics, r reminders of... of executing the proper game plan, you know, and uh, he's kind of, Eric's the kind of guy, he breeds confidence and he'll, he'll make you confident, you know, and obviously his hard, the hard work he puts into the gym uh, in working with you makes you want to work hard for him as well. So both Charlo and Centeno Jr. coming in in tip-top physical shape, and of course Charlo just his second fight at 160 pounds. Charlo's identical twin brother, older by a minute, Jamel Charlo, a current champion There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the interim WBC middleweight world champion, Jamal Charlo, Hugo the Boss Centeno Jr. So that is the second of our triple header, Saturday night again, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific, from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Jamal Charlo, Hugo Centeno Jr. looking to move into pole position for an opportunity at a 160-pound championship. Hugo Centeno, Jr., your last fight, probably the best win of your career, a one-punch knockout. What did that fight against Emmanuel Aleem do for your confidence? Uh, you know what? Besides my confidence, I feel like it catapulted me back to the top, you know, with all the the best stars and the top five in the middleweight division. So, uh, you know, my confidence is through the roof, and I feel like I can do that to anybody. You're the tallest opponent Jamal Charlo has ever faced. Are we going to be looking for a fight in ring center from you, or are you going to be looking for that one-punch knockout again? Uh, you know, honestly, uh, whatever opportunity presents itself, I'll take it. Whether it's a fight or a chess match, we'll make it happen. I'm going to switch it up, mix it in a little bit of both, and uh, give the fans what they want. I saw you were smiling at Jermel Charlo's comments over here. Do you feel like sometimes you're fighting two Charlo brothers? No, nah, not really. If I have to, I'll fight both of them. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I focus on the task at hand. I'm just, I know these little mind games and how they play. And, uh, you know, if it's not him, it's his brother or vice versa. So, you know, I, I know what it is. At the end of the day, it's me and his brother, not me and the other Charlo. We wish you luck. Good Thanks, luck. Sir, Thanks, Hugo. We'll get Jamal in here. Jamal Charlo, trained by Ronnie Shields. Jamal, we're just going to ask you one question. Okay, what? Only one. Okay. At the fighter meetings, you told us this fight was originally planned for March. Yeah. It got canceled when Hugo had an injury. And you said you were very frustrated. You're going to try to take that frustration out on him tomorrow night? No, I was just frustrated at the moment. This time, I'm having fun. So, look, hey, turn up, Brooklyn. That's it. One question. Good luck. Right. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. So it will be Jamal Charlo, Hugo Centeno Jr. squaring off scheduled 12 rounder. Pivotal fight at 160 pounds. Refused to use the word that starts with an I and ends with an M. Well, fans, here we go. From Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, we are ready 
as Premier Boxing Champions presents the official weigh-in for the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing in a catchweight 144-pound special attraction. And it's all brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, Debella Entertainment, TGB Promotions, and Showtime, sponsored by Corona, who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. At this time, we welcome our fighters to the stage. First, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada. He is the WBC and WBA number three ranked welterweight in the world. Please welcome the former two division world champion, boxing's pride of Las Vegas, Jesse Vargas. And we invite his opponent to the stage at this time, known around the world from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the WBC number four ranked super lightweight world contender. Please welcome the former four division world champion, Adrian, the problem Broner. And the fighters are almost ready to step onto the scale. We invite them at this time to do so. Once again, 144 pound catch weight limit on this fight. First, we invite to the scale a young veteran of five world title appearances. He is the former two weight division world champion, once again known as the pride of Las Vegas, Jesse Vargas. Vargas 28 and 2 with 10 wins inside the distance. Only two losses come against Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley. Smile says it all. 143 and 3 quarter pounds. 143 and 3 quarter pounds for Jesse Vargas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, onto the scale with seven knockouts in his nine world title appearances. Here is the colorful former four division world champion, Adrian the Problem Broner. We have 144.2 pounds. 144.2 pounds for Adrian Broner. So the weight limit on this fight is 144 pounds. Adrian Broner slightly over, 0.2 pounds over. He's going to try again. Hold up a towel, remove his shorts, see if he makes that 144-pound weight limit. Never a dull moment when it comes to Adrian Broner, right, Polly? Contract weight 144 pounds for Adrian Broner. There the fight go. is on. Makes the weight. Makes the weight. But is it the right weight for Adrian Broner? Some, many pundits, many fans believe he is best at 135 and when he has jumped up in weight and actually faced the toughest opponents, the elite opposition, he has come up short against Mikey Garcia, Sean uh, Porter, Marcos Maidana. In order to be elite, you have to beat the elite, right, Paul? Yeah, of course. I don't, I don't know that he can make 135 anymore, and that's the thing. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to make this weight. At the bigger weight, you have find a more difficult time. Uh, because you're, you know, you're dealing with just as much talent, but now you're also dealing with the natural physicality of those guys. So, but it's Groundhog Day when it comes to Adrian Broner. Every fighter meeting, he says the same thing. I've, I'm focused now. I'm, I'm rededicated. You're going to see a much different Adrian Broner, and then we see what we saw against Mikey Garcia, where we know Broner has all the and skills, the are ready all the to talents. Face off. He needs to throw more punches. Well, we'll, we'll see this fight. Kevin Adrian, the know. problem, Broner, Jesse Vargas, 144-pound catchweight fight. Facing off now for the final time before they meet each other tomorrow night, the main event on Showtime. Vargas replacing the injured Omar Figueroa, a much different style fighter. Figueroa, a pressure fighter. Vargas known for boxing on his back foot and some, some camaraderie on the stage between Broner and Vargas. Yeah, but Broner is always tongue in cheek. So <laughs> 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 you never know if they're smiling at each other, but talking, but talking treasure. If they're just smiling at each other because they're being respectful. Well, he needs to get serious about his career if he wants to remain. And that's the thing. Despite his setbacks, despite 
all the issues he's had inside and outside of the ring. He remains a, a huge dry here. The ticket sales are robust for the event on Saturday night here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. I'll tell you what, though. Jesse Vargas, Keep talking about when you saw that after. you made weight, you smiled and you did a fist pump. So were you relieved? Were you expecting maybe you wouldn't make weight? No, never. Um, I've never missed weight, and this isn't going to be any different. Uh, we just, I mean, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and the minute that I saw I hit 144 or 143, 143.8, I was excited because now I can, you know, rehydrate, and I'm looking forward to this fight. I mean, uh, all the workload, all the hard work is done. Now all I got to do is have fun Saturday night, enjoy myself, entertain my fans, and it's going to be a lovely night. Fighting Adrian Turner isn't quite like fighting anybody else, at least until the fight. How have you handled the distractions, the antics, and everything else, and all the work? You know what? I, I have a good team behind me, and I know it. That helps me maintain focus in training camp. Anything that comes out from anyone else, it doesn't matter. As long as my team is on track, which they have, Mike McCullough, my father, Jose Vargas, David Levy, Jessica Vargas. Uh, and we're starting on the everyone, wide, right? My nutritionist that helped me make weight. Um, they all were on board. We were only on one path, which is positive going forward. We're and because of that, you can't really all. base yourself on any negativity. You can't put any thought to it or mind to it. And we just stay focused. So, yeah. AB. Don't touch your back. Don't touch your back. I won't touch you. We know that your pants weigh, uh, your underpants weigh two ounces. Now y'all know. Now y'all know. The beard was next if you didn't make weight, man. <laughs> you got jokes today, all right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got jokes today, Jim. <laughs> all right, let's get serious. <laughs> That's classic. You have a newfound focus. You have a new trainer. You had a great camp. Explain how that focus is going to manifest itself in the ring. Um, we had a hell of a camp. You know, uh, it's very different. It's my first time doing a full camp for, for one of my fights with Uncle Kev is what I call him. Well, Coach Ken Kevin Cunningham, what you know him as. And, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was very militant, but uh, we got through it. Is there a sense of urgency that maybe wasn't there in the past or is more urgency this time than in the past? It was just, it was always there. It's just, you know, um, something that had to be brought back out of Adrian Broner. And um, tomorrow night, you know, uh, I will be victorious and um, I'm going to put on a great show. We look forward to it. Good luck. All right, thanks. Thanks. Steve Farhood's got jokes, but no joking well, ladies matter. Ladies and gentlemen, from on here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Broner. that concludes our official weigh-in for our big triple header taking place tomorrow night. Bring to your attention, doors open at 5 p.m. First fight soon after that, right at 5 p.m., a full night of action coming your way. We go on live on Showtime, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and we'll see you then. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, Jimmy Lennon Jr., thank you very much. Back here, joined by... Paulie Malinaji and also Mr. Steve Farhood, the man with the jokes, according to. Oh, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you set up there. My bad. And Polly, let's start with you. You've been in the ring with Adrian Broner at Barclays Center, a hotly contested, razor thin decision. What is it about Adrian Broner that that makes him such a compelling figure as a boxer? Well, first off, he's a he's a great fighter. I mean, he's regardless of what you think about him, he can't fight, and he's a, he's a, he's a fighter on a world class level. But controversy, it's always controversial. You know, he's always generates opinions. You know, and maybe they're not always positive, but he's a controversial figure in boxing. He's a controversial figure in sports and entertainment, and uh, people talk about him. Steve Broner's going to try to avoid the first two fight losing streak of his career against Mikey Garcia, and we've talked about it. He's only lost against the elite, but as I mentioned to Paulie, in order to be the elite, you have to beat that level of opposition. And against Mikey Garcia, it, it seemed to be the same old story. He's just not throwing enough punches. He looked, right. uh, he looked listless, unfocused, and that has been the operative word. But how, much, how long can a guy cry wolf? Well, I, I think the change in trainer is a big plus. Um, he was stale. He was stagnant with, with Mike Stafford. Uh, he said Mike was like a friend to him. Well, you don't want your trainer to be a friend. You want your and Cunningham is anything but Exactly. Strict. Former, a former police officer and a tough guy. Uh, we, he, we know his history. And I think that this is really a key fight for Broner because if he doesn't turn it around tomorrow night with a new trainer and a new focus, then when is he going to turn it around? What, what do you want to see out of A.B. Saturday night in terms of what he does 
when the bell goes. I think you just need to see consistency. You know, Jesse Vargas has been a guy who has shown consistency in his career as far as the, his fighting style. You know, he's a guy who's going to make Adrian fight all three minutes. And if Adrian doesn't fight all three, Adrian Brunner doesn't fight all three minutes against Jesse Vargas, Jesse Vargas will take advantage of that. You know, he's talented enough to take advantage of it, and he's talented enough to make him pay for that. So I think if you're going to see an improved AB, that's kind of been the the repetitive problem he's had is that he's – I wouldn't say he's distracted, but, you know, he looks to conserve energy and then try to let it go in big spots. Conserve energy and look to let it go in big spots. But he's conserving, taking too much time doing the conserving. He's got to kind of spread it out a little better and uh, probably uh, throw some more punches or at least give us the illusion that he's going to be a bit busier. Quintessential crossroads fight for both guys. Vargas, his only two losses against Timothy Bradley and Manny Pacquiao. What does he have to do to record the upset? Or is it an upset? There, it depends on who you're, well, you're looking at. He, yeah. He's even a favorite in some circles. Yeah. Vargas is a razor-thin favorite with the odds. But I, I think a, an important point for either guy, whoever wins this fight, let's not forget, this is still the best division in boxing, the hottest division in boxing. And a win like this, a high-profile win on Showtime, obviously will elevate you to another big fight. You can't say that necessarily in every other division, but because the welterweight division is so stacked with fighters that these guys can fight, that makes this fight even more important. And at this level, must win for all involved. Adrian Broner and Jesse Vargas will go at it in our 12-round main event scheduled for 12. Now, the co-feature, we have uh, a fight at 160 pounds, guys, where Jamal Charlo, proving in his first fight anyway at 160, he brought up that vaunted power from 154. First guy to stop, Jorge Haaland. Against Hugo Centeno Jr., what's, what's the key in order for Charlo to remain successful and move into a much bigger fight at 160. Yeah, well, Charlo clearly wants the bigger fights at 160, and this is a stepping stone for that. Charlo stopped 18 of his last 20 opponents. The guy can punch. I think we know that. He has a great jab. He can box. We don't know what the ceiling is yet. That's one of the reasons I like to see him fight so much, but as his brother as well. They, they keep wowing us with not one-punch knockouts and good performances. What's the ceiling for these guys? And the beauty of Jamal is that he's a middleweight, and we know who is at the top of the middleweight division. We want to see those fights. Paulie, what about Centeno Jr.? What does he bring to this matchup? Well, he's a, he's, a, he's a good textbook boxer. He fights out of both stances, and uh, you know he's brought, he's brought some good power himself. You know, he's got a couple of highlight real knockouts on it, on it in his own right. Um, I think the, the key for Centeno is not to let the moment get the best of him. This is the biggest moment of his career. This is his, his time to shine as far as, you know, he will be judged on this performance more so than he's been judged on any other, on any other performance. Uh, if, he, if he comes up short here and he doesn't look good, he goes back to the level that he's been fighting at, which is just below the, the world-class level, you know, and he's, he's fought well at that level, but this is the level you want to be at. This is the level where you make money. This is the level where you make your name. This is the, le the level where, you know, you get the endorsement opportunities. This is the level where you got a lot of TV time. So it's important that he doesn't let the moment get the best of him. You know, he, he fights his fight. He fights his style, which may or may not be enough against a world-class right. fighter like Jamal Charlo, but you want to bring the best of yourself when you're in these moments. What is the key to Charlo's power? We've, we've seen it on display, especially, uh, you know, the Julian Williams, the, the, the right uppercut from Hades, and, and, he, and it has improved fight in and fight out including again at his first fight at 160 what's the key to to charlo's power well, i think jamal has been the more consistent puncher of the two brothers you know jamal was not as consistent of a puncher earlier in his career either way both guys have the great fundamentals they are well schooled well taught whoever taught these guys to fight and obviously their their ability comes into play as well whoever taught these guys to fight did an excellent job i mean these guys are so textbook and on top of that they have the incredible athleticism a uh, natural power uh, speed, size, you know, size. So, so on top of that, you you have you've taught these guys to box in such a proper way. They know all they know all the fundamental answers. But then on top of that, they have the genetics and the and the natural talent to go along with it. it and and it's it, it makes them very difficult to beat. Talk about the stakes in this fight, Steve. Where does the winner go? Well, the winner becomes a mandatory in one of the alphabet organizations. We know that Canelo and Golovkin are the, at the top of the division. They're probably going to fight each other before the year is out, maybe September. So obviously there'll be some waiting left for the winner of this fight. But the winner is in good position, and in politics and boxing can get in the way. But if you're mandatory, hopefully down the road, maybe uh, you have to fight Jamal Charlo or Hugo Centeno. The opening fight, 130-pound affair with uh, Gervonta Davis. Bouncing back, even I, I say bounce back. He, he's he's undefeated, and yet not his greatest performance, self admittedly, against uh, Francisco Fonseca on a stage where he was supposed to seize that moment under the Mayweather McGregor banner, the second biggest pay per view in history. 
He wants to be a pay-per-view star. He also, like Broner, has had issues outside of the ring. Uh, and he talks about rededicating himself. And he's only 23 years old and talks about focus and needing structure. Had to leave his hometown of Baltimore. Went down to Florida to work with Kevin Cunningham as well. Gervonta Davis has all the tools to be the next pay-per-view star. How does he get there? Well, you know, he's got to, again, it's about consistency with him too. You know, he's he's got to put the whole package together. You know, you always want to maximize your potential. And, and, and Javante has a lot of potential. You know, there's a lot of skill. There's a big skill set there. But on top of that, the potential for stardom is also there. I was talking to some of the guys in the behind the scenes at Barclays Center. They told me Javante was the biggest ticket seller for the show. Really? People come up from Baltimore, Baltimore yeah. like crazy for this guy. So so he's got a, a homegrown fan base that buys tickets. He's a he's a he's a He's a, he's a box office draw this early in his career. So it makes it all the more important for you to put the, put the whole package together because you have the paper views, you have pay-per-view star potential when you are a box office draw and you put the talent together and you get the results necessary. But it comes down to him and his self-discipline and his consistency inside the gym and in his fights. Well, we saw already some focus, obviously, not missing weight this time, Steve. Uh, against Jesus Quajar, we've seen him in the past, who he lost his 126-pound title to Abner Marez, yet gets rewarded with this opportunity. Stylistically, this should be a barn burner. Oh, yeah. I mean, Quajar makes... For as long as it lasts. Right. Quajar makes for good fights. If Javante Davis is on his game, obviously, he'd make him the favorite. Javante Davis, to me, is in a very lucky position because he dodged a bullet. He didn't make weight, and he lost his title on the scale last time out. And then he had a very flat performance and still won. And here he is fighting for a title in the same division that he couldn't make weight for last time. So this is a tremendous opportunity for him. The good news is that he's fighting a pretty good fighter who has to prove that he can fight at this weight. Final thoughts on the card, a triple header Saturday night here at Barclays as this building continues to host the best in the sport. Barclays Center continues to host the best in the sport. And Showtime Championship Boxing is the home of the best fighters in the sport. So uh, we, we, I look forward to bringing everybody at home along with the team, uh, on the great show. What are you looking forward to most? What, what the journalist, uh, Steve Farhood, what answers are you looking for? Instead of the journalist, Steve Farhood, I'll give an answer to the better Steve Farhood. <laughs> B-E-T-T-O-R. <laughs> you don't get many fights in boxing, many, many main events, that are virtually pick em. This is virtually a pick em fight. It would be great if all fights were pick em, but that's not the way boxing works, let's face it. This is a pick em fight with, with uh, uh, Vargas being a very slight favorite, it's going to be a very interesting main event. The stakes are very high. That's what has my so attention. So is, is the B-E-T-T-O-R the over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scoring, Paulie. He's I'm always scoring. over. I'm Steve Farrard's always I'm over. I'm not talking. Uh, we want you to, of course, uh, join us on Saturday. The entire Showtime Championship Boxing Squad will be at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It is a triple header headlined by a catchweight fight, 144 pounds. Adrian Broner trying to avoid the first two-fight losing streak of his career against Jesse Vargas. We'll see Jamal Charlo Hugo Centeno go at it in a pivotal 160-pound contest. And a piece of the 130-pound crown is up for grabs when undefeated knockout artist Javante Davis takes on former featherweight champion Jesus Quajar. Again, it comes to you live Saturday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on Showtime.